Okay, this is AP, AB, and BC Calc. Uh, I'm doing an extra video on the limits of composite functions because I've had some requests for this. So uh, we're going to start with the slightly easier examples where you could kind of accidentally stumble on the right answer. Uh, and then we're going to do two examples that are the ones that tend to stump people when they see them on the AP just so that we know what we're looking at. Okay, so in general, what you want to do is you want to evaluate uh, the limit of the inside function first, the thing on the inside. So I want to evaluate the limit as x approaches 2 of this thing on the inside. And then that input, including any directional implications, which we'll talk about in the later uh, examples in this video, will become the input into the outer function. So here's the idea. The first thing I need to figure out is what is the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x. I need to do the inside function, okay? So when I do that, I look at g of x, and as x approaches a 2, the limit seems to be a 3. But notice that both of these uh, sides are approaching from numbers below 3. So this is a 3, but from uh, less than 3, right? So, so both sides are approaching from less than the number 3, from below 3. What that means is that that input, when I go to make it the, the output, uh, sorry, when I make that output the input of the next function, I'm going to use the limit as that input approaches 3 from numbers less than 3 of my outside function. So see how that becomes the input of the outer function. So it mattered that it was less than 3. Now I did say in this example it doesn't matter what the direction is. The reason it doesn't matter what the direction is here is that f is continuous at 3. So f of x is continuous at x equals 3. So what that means is that the left-sided limit is the same as the right-sided limit is the same as the double-sided limit is the same as the function's actual value at 3. So the reason it didn't matter in this case, if you noticed from the left, is that all of the answers are going to be a 1 anyway. Even if you didn't spot the from the left, even if you only spot that you were supposed to be checking what's happening at 3, you would still get an answer of 1. It's not that you're not still supposed to notice that, but it wouldn't be relevant to you getting your answer, okay? Let's go ahead and do a second one. This is another one where it's going to turn out to not be relevant. So let's start with what's happening on the inside. The limit as x approaches 0 of g of x. So let's find that inside first, the limit as x approaches 0 of g of x. right? So I look and say, oh, look, g is continuous there. So that's a 1. right? Not only is it a 1, but it's a 1 from both sides. Um, right? So it's a 1 from below and a 1 from above. So it's a 1 from both sides um, above and below. right? So that's, that means that when I go to plug it in, I can go ahead and plug it in as the double-sided limit. So this output becomes my input to the f function. So now I'm going to do the limit as x approaches 1. I don't need a directional indicator because notice that these two red arrows were approaching from both above and below. So I want the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x. Well, I look and I see that f is continuous there, so it's a negative 3. All right. Okay, so now we're going to do the slightly harder examples where the direction really matters. So let's start with evaluating this limit of the inside function. So I want the limit as x approaches negative 2 of g of x. Okay, well, I, here's my x is negative 2, so that limit is definitely a 2, but what I want you to notice is it's a 2 from the left, right? Uh, because it's a 2 from the numbers uh, less than 2. Right? Like both of these arrows are approaching from the bottom and coming up to the top. So that output is going to become my new input. So the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of f of x. Well, that means that my answer is a 3. Right? So, so if you didn't do this, if you didn't take into account the direction, you would have accidentally defaulted to picking the close dot. If you just got that this answer was 2, you would have said, oh, so I want f of 2, and you would have picked negative 1, and that's wrong. And the AP catches you on this trick. So the direction that you are approaching, that inside value, matters. Uh, okay, let's do one more. So in this one, I didn't give you the second function, and that was intentional. So in this one, we want the limit as... Uh, as x approaches 0 of f of x squared plus 1. Okay, so we're going to do the inside thing first, right? The reason I gave you the second graph is if you need to graph x squared plus 1, this is what x squared plus 1 looks like. So if you need to graph this, great. If you don't need to graph it, great. But if you need to graph it, it looks something like this. Okay, so my inside limit, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the limit as x approaches 0 of the inside thing. Well, looking at this, both of these values are approaching a 1, but they're approaching 1 from above the 1, right? So this is uh, from above, right? They are both approaching a y value of 1, but from numbers higher than 1. There's an e on that above. I just ran out of room. That 
output is going to become my new input. So I want the limit as x approaches 1 from the right, or from, from values higher than 1, of f of x. Well, that matters, because that is going to be on this side, and your answer is a negative 2. If you didn't notice the side thing, you would have just gotten that this output was a 1. You would have plugged, you would have said, oh, so I want f of 1, and you would have given me the answer 0, which would be incorrect. So hopefully uh, this clarifies it a little. These are definitely trick questions that they throw on the AP to mess with you. Uh, but I want to make sure that you had a little extra practice at them.